we're swapping from iOS to the Galaxy Note 10, it's just, who, who am I now? Am I even, who, who, who's that guy? Who's that? We're just changed, dude. We're a whole new person. New channel, new PC, new Android. What? Green is the new blue. Take two, we're good. What's up guys, your boy Connor. We're out here at the Domain here in Austin, Texas. We're gonna be doing a quick comparison of the phone. We're gonna screen record us. We took a couple photos while we were coming to the coffee shop here at the Domain <laughs> before we were coming to Starbucks and there was a cool, there was a couple of lines from the buildings that looked cool so we had to stop and of course you saw my aggravation there where we got a little heated just because that always happens. But we today we're gonna be comparing the Galaxy Note 10 which is our new, new, look at that reflection just coming at you. From the iPhone, we jump ship. No more iPhone, no more iOS. The iPhone 11, it's cool in theory, but it's just not worth it to me. And with the new phones as they continue to progress, iPhone 8, 9, the X, and now the 11, essentially it looks the same body style. Now they are similar, don't get me wrong, but the, all they do is just change maybe the camera and a couple other things that we talked about. It doesn't motivate me to drop $1,200 on a new phone when essentially it's just this with a faster processor, better software, and a couple extra lenses on the back. It just didn't look good to me. So I was like, cool, we decided we're just gonna hold on to the 7. And as we kind of dove in to YouTube, just exploring the iPhone 11 and how people thought and all the reviews, we started seeing some of the Galaxy Note 10 video. What had really sold me was the pro setting on the camera. I was just like, what, dude? That's insane because the, the camera on the iPhone is good. Don't get me wrong, I'm not hating. It's done great. I used to prefer it over a lot of cameras. And the fact that you have your phone with you 90% of the time, you can go out there, take a couple photos, and they're good. I mean, they're solid. Add something in post. You can just do Snapseed, the VSCO, or Visco, however you pronounce that app. And you get a solid produced photograph. With the new triple cameras, it was like, oh, that's kind of cool. But it just looked ugly, so we didn't even bother. We said, no, okay, cool. And as we looked at the Galaxy Note 10, it was interesting. But like I said, what sold us was the pro portion of it because it allowed you to control the ISO, your shutter speed, you could do a couple other settings. You can even set your temperature setting, you can do it warm or cool, you can even change the brightness, the, the saturation. We'll dive on into that all right now. They marry each other fairly well, they're a similar size. We got the Galaxy Note set here on top, and then we have the iPhone on the bottom. And they look similar. It's been a while since I've had the new phone feel where I would pick up a phone and then just with the new iPhones when I jump from in each new generation, it would take me maybe five to 10 minutes max to re-download all the widgets, all the apps, and then put them in the place that I liked them, do everything, and then we were set. With this one, it was it was like that time when you get that whole new phone because it was just, you had to learn a whole new operating system because the fact that I was so used to Apple, 100%, it was just I knew exactly what I was gonna get out of the gate, out of the package, and it was cool, I liked it, because it would still be like, hey, it's a new phone, but maybe an hour, put it away, and then it was just another phone. After having switched, I was giddy. I was just, well, first you have to, you, you have to have patience when you swap from one system to another, because it's different. The, the special movements are different. One thing I kept on trying to find was with Apple, where you can kind of swipe up and it closes an app. This one is similar, but still a little different. One thing that I really noticed it is the messages in Instagram, where some of the features on Instagram where you get into a message, you can just swipe back to where, so if I'm, te if I'm in a message, da -da -da, and I'm done with it, I can just swipe off the screen and it goes back to my message hub, my directory. But with this, with the Galaxy Note 10, it doesn't do that. On Instagram, you pretty much have to press your little back button at the bottom, and that's it. It's, it's, I kept on finding myself doing a couple of things that I would do frequently on the Apple. And it's just a learning curve is all it is. And that's where the patience comes in. I am happy with the Galaxy Note 10 Plus because the color, the vibrancy is there. We're gonna do a screen record of it so that we can see everything. I've noticed is that the video in regards to Snapchat and Instagram is a little weird. This does have an Instagram mode. Whenever I look at the video, I feel like the video and the audio are a little bit off. They don't look good. It just, 
it sharpens up the image of the face and it has a couple different settings here, but we're gonna go ahead and dive into that. We're gonna sit down, really get into it. Overall, we're gonna do a comparison and video from both. I do believe that the Apple outweighs the Galaxy and the Android system platform in regards to Instagram and Snapchat, mostly just because the video within those apps with the, the camera and the software with each, I do believe it works better just because you get that Android feel. If, if, you, if you're from Apple and you have a couple of friends that run Android, you know what I'm talking about. If you run Android and you're in Apple, you, sorry dude, it's true, you're, you're that guy. Okay, so first up, we're gonna be doing a couple of photos that we got off of the Canon 80D, and this is a Samsung Galaxy Note 10. So what we're gonna be doing is, my help we have right side up. We're still trying to find the screen record. Three, two, one, screen record. So what we're gonna do is go to Snapseed. We have Lightroom, we have yet to start using it. We're accustomed and used to Snapseed. So we're gonna go ahead and use it. Allow, uh, not sorted. So we're gonna go ahead and edit. Let's do this dope bicycle we came across. So, not sure what the looks are, but we're gonna do tools. And I always like to use ambience a little bit. I will say that right now I'm noticing that the response to my finger on these adjustment levels is pretty quick. Now we use this, I mean, a lot on iPhone, and I'm sure that you can mess with the settings on the sensitivity of your screen, but this is quick. I mean, I would do it that quick on the iPhone, and it, right now it goes from 10 to 34 quick, really fast. And on the iPhone, it would go 10, maybe 20, 25, and so forth, to where I, I like that. And for the most part, I think that's pretty good. We're gonna go ahead and save that, export save. We're gonna do a couple of these photos, just so that way we can knock them out. This one's kind of dope. Tools, and a lot of times it's the same stuff that I'll do. I kind of know how I like it. That's just way too much. This one's a little contrasty. I'm not sure how I, I like it. And one of the guys I saw on YouTube, you'll even go and do the curves on here, which I have no idea where they're at. Oh, curves. And he'll mess with the highlights and the shadows. So he'll bring down the highlights and up the shadows, but I don't even know how he does that. And then he'll even do, bring out the reds. Oh, that's actually kind of dope. Was it greens or blues? I can't remember what he popped up. So I think he did the opposite with that. That's too much though. So anyway, I don't like that. So we're just gonna go export, save that, and then do one of the motorcycle. These are just dope. These are the ones at the bottom are uh, from Google. Let's do this one. Yeah. This one kind of has like a, a fisheye look. That's too much. And this was shot with, all the ones that I just edited were shot with a 10 to 18 millimeter lens which so far is one of my favorite uh, right now we have the 1855 kit lens from the old Canon Rebel and we're looking at a couple other prime, we like prime lenses but we're probably gonna invest oh that was saturation in more of a telephoto see right now I'm having a little bit trouble seeing exactly what's going there we go I don't know if it's just because it's bright what but let's do that say contrast and a lot of the ways I'm editing it is pretty much how I edit 98% of my photos on Instagram now that we have Visco we have access we're gonna go ahead and import the photos that we just edited in Snapseed and we're gonna go ahead and bring it into Visco which is, the, is this one this one and this one import now it may take us a little bit, just because, now that we're new to all this, okay. Oh, uh, you know what, I, think, I don't even know if we still have the favorite. Oh, here it is. There we go. It was pretty much, we always use the one of three, the C7, C8, or C9. And you just take a look at how you want it, you change the intensity of that filter, and then you just go as proceeded. Is there not one? They changed it, so sharpen, 
There was also a Visco for Android, apparently, but... We've been wanting, we've been liking a little bit of green in our photos lately. Normally we like it really cool and we've been adding a little bit of warmth. So if you go one way, it makes it red to skin tones and the other way it makes it yellow. And we always usually do it somewhere in the middle. You can add a little bit of grain for some texture, a little bit of fade to pop it out, make it a little vintage. There's no clarity. All right, that's it. So now we'll save that. So now we'll edit this one. Okay, cool, whatever. So we go to our usual. I'm pretty bummed that we don't have See, this one's just way too intense like that. So there's stock. Somewhere in the middle we usually like it. We're probably be bumping up the shadows on this one, sharpen it. This just looks a little too dark, white balance. Add a couple greens and move these over here. A little warmer. That's two. That's kind of cool. Skin tone. Again, add a little bit of grain. Slight fade. Save that. That's editing real quick on the Samsung Galaxy Note 10. And now we're just gonna go ahead and snap a couple photos with the Samsung Galaxy Note 10 Plus. And we're gonna snap a couple photos with an older iPhone. This is the 7 Plus, but you can get an idea of the camera for the Galaxy Note 10 Plus, which so far I really enjoy. So this is the regular video mode on the Galaxy Note 10 Plus. We're doing just a quick 360 degree of this cool little park area that we're at in the domain. And so here is just a solid recording. Oh hey guys, we're just having lunch, dope. That looks good, this guy's on his phone checking his Instagram. Yo dude, Hot Connor's posting some dope content lately. Let me just subscribe. And you can also take a photo if you want as you're recording. And so this was a zoom. What? So you can just press the little tree button and it zooms. So you can have wide, your standard, and then your zoom. So how far? That's actually pretty good. That looks dope. Uh, we should just be recording like this the whole time. Wide angle looks cool. Okay, so there's that. What live focus video does, when you have the camera here, is it blurs out the background similar to the portrait mode on iPhones and whatever it is on Instagram. It's okay. I think it makes the face way too harsh, really detailed, and I'm not a fan of it. So now we're gonna move over to a different effect. You can do, the glitch is kind of dope, just because this would be cool to film, give you that nostalgic feeling but too long of a video in this mode made people just like, this just looks weird. So moving on, we have hyper, we have hyperlapse, what? So I don't even know, how, how long do you need hyperlapse for it to work? Unless it does, hmm, yeah, I don't even know what that, what that mode does. So live focus video, we touched the base on, uh, color point, it's just not really doing much. There's the live focus, we have the night, which is not nighttime, so that won't work out. And we have Instagram mode. This is what Instagram, what it does is it records it in the Instagram and then you can upload it straight to your story. But I think the video is kind of lacking. It's not as bad as if you're in Instagram, you try to record a video. We'll just try that here in a second. Oh, that was a photo. That, <laughs> that's an awkward photo. Uh, let's do a video. What's up guys? We're out here at the domain. We're recording the Apple iPhone comparison. We messed that up. Uh, versus the Galaxy Note 10 Plus, we are on the Galaxy Note 10 Plus currently. So it's gonna go ahead and save the video. Plus, we are on but the, the video looks like it's lagging on here. Guys, we're out here. So we're gonna go ahead and save that. Which one of the reasons why I'm not 100% sold on it, I think that what we'll be doing is we'll record a video in the same portrait mode. Say, hey guys, we're out here at the domain and then upload it to Instagram. And I don't believe that there'll be that lag or that Android video if you, like we talked about earlier. So there's that. Uh, same thing with Snapchat. If we are in Snapchat, one of the things that this camera does is it zooms in really close, which is like, 
What's up guys, your boy Connor. We are out here at the Domain in Austin, Texas. We're doing a comparison video with the Galaxy Note 10 Plus versus the iPhone system. What's up guys, your boy Connor. We are out here at the Domain That actually doesn't look too bad. Texas. We're doing a comparison video with the Galaxy Note 10 Plus So we're going to go ahead and save that. Versus the Memories and camera roll. System. Save. Up, guys? So now we're going to take a couple photos and then we're going to go ahead and bump over to the iPhone and see if there's any major differences. This is this is, ugh, we keep on doing that devices. This is a thing, this is a, an actual thing where I don't know how these tech people do it, but we're getting the hang of it. This is the stock or the default setting where I was like, oh man, we can't get all of it. But at the wide portion, kapow! And the new iPhone 11 does have the same feature, so it's not a fair comparison with the older iPhone, and this one, just note that, but the new iPhone 11 does have this feature, which is neat. But you have three ugly lenses on the back. So here is photo. Oh, let's do that. Photo. That's amazing. Let's get our helmet in there. And I don't like that tree, but you can end, end up editing that out. So we're gonna go ahead and maybe do a cool of the camera. That's kind of dope. I'll just do figo standard. Now a lot of stuff when it comes to the photography or the videography, moto vlogs, etc. It just comes down to composition. So we can kind of do like a neat little, oh, we're out here. The wide angle looks awesome. It's a little fish eye look. She's bending down, that makes the composition look ugly, but we're gonna take that photo anyway. So we have the sun popping out. And with the iPhone, so we have a photo, selfie. And you have your video, which is good video. And with iPhone, you have your slow-mo, you have your time-lapse, you have video, photo, you have portrait, which is always a really good one. I've always liked that one. You have your square, which I hardly ever use, and you have your pano. So that's neat, uh, but I do have to say that I do enjoy the ease. Let's go ahead and do a quick edit in Snapseed. So tools, tune image. We like the ambience a little bit. Highlights, bring them down. We bring the shadows up a little bit. But this is where I was talking about where the difference between the iPhone, the 7 that we're running, but the operating, operating system on this, is that the, the quickness and response of the touch screen on this for the, the meters is different. So we're gonna go ahead and export that. Export, save, modify, and now we're gonna go back into Visco on Apple. Now we're gonna go to our usual. Like we said, we usually do one of three and depending on what you're looking for, you can change the intensity of that filter, sharpen. Here's the clarity button of what we're talking about. I really like this to where if you go extreme, it makes it real stylized. It's like an HDR photograph. But we always dial it down, or if we're starting from zero, we dial it up just enough. And I like that, I'm happy with that. Saturation, you can add a little bit of saturation if you want. And then, like I said, we've been enjoying some greens in our photos lately, skin tone, and then add a little bit of grain for texture, a little style, a little pizzazz. Throw some fade in. And that's it. And then you would upload that to whatever platform you want, whether it be Facebook, Instagram. If you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. And while you're there, bump over and hit that bell notification to be notified of any future videos they drop as soon as they drop. Much appreciated, thank you, and drop a comment down below what phone you're looking at getting. Are you amped for the iPhone 11, or are you jumping ship? Are you straying away? Since I left you stood the test of time like a leader, it got too far, I will always linger.